Thank you so much to AC Wilson on my Discord server for helping me out with this video. I do sometimes ask people for help if I need to get into a custom game on my server, so feel free to join. The link is in the description. Here are three tips for every single killer in Dead by Daylight, and I will be avoiding perks and add-ons just so I can base this list on purely the killer's power itself. If you guys found any of these tips helpful, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you're new, and let's get right into the list. Trapper. Fake place a trap while in chase to bait the survivor into leaving the loop. This usually will give you enough time to catch up to them before the next loop. Put traps at the top of the stairs. It's really difficult to see and disarm, and most survivors won't expect it, especially if you're chasing them. If a survivor is rescuing another survivor from the basement, put a trap at the top of the stairs while they're rescuing. They will usually take note of where the traps are when they go down, but will not expect a new trap to be placed there when they go up. Wraith. Assuming you're not against a team bringing Circle of Healing, the hit and run play style is the best way to play Wraith. If you know where more than one person is, uncloak, hit them, recloak, go to the second person, hit them, and then repeat if there are more survivors, then chase the last person or the the closest person to down them. This forces the other survivors to heal while you're chasing someone, which means they're not doing generators. You can body block pallets and windows while you're uncloaking to stop survivors in their tracks. This can get you an easy hit that you may not have been able to otherwise. After uncloaking, you have a short speed burst which can make your lunges really long. You can use this to do some really cool mind games like pretending to uncloak towards one side of the pallet, but then lunging in the opposite direction. Hillbilly. Get as close as you can to the survivor before starting to rev your chainsaw. This will make it much more difficult to dodge. You can stall your chainsaw by clicking it rather than holding it, this will allow you to hold your chainsaw out for a longer period of time if needed. However, it will overheat while you're doing this, so be careful of that. Know when to just M1 instead of using your chainsaw. A lot of times you will think you have to use this insta-down ability to get any use out of him, but many times you can just build pressure by hitting them normally. Nurse. Always use your first blink to go to the survivor's last seen location, and then use your second blink to go to them. Some survivors will try to double back because they think you're going to blink straight through the wall, and this will ensure that you basically get a hit every time, because if they double back, you'll be able to hit them, but if they don't double back, then you'll be able to hit them with your second blink. To traverse the map, only use your first blink. The first blink gets you more distance, so you will save time by blinking once, waiting for it to recharge, and then blinking again. Looking down will stop your blink short, so whenever you're wanting to blink as far as you can, look up right before you blink to ensure that you're going the maximum distance possible. Huntress. When in this situation where you're holding a hatchet and the survivor is really close to you, keep your camera still rather than tracking the survivor's movements. Then throw your hatchet when the survivor goes in front of your hatchet. This will make you less likely to miss. Be patient. I see too many Huntress players pull up their hatchet and throw it immediately. Unless you're extremely good at Huntress, this will result in a missed hatchet 80% of the time. Generally, if you're close to a survivor, you want to hit them with your hatchet first and then catch up to them to M1 them. This is the most ideal and time convenient method of downing survivors. Shape. Be closer to survivors when you're stalking them. The closer you are, the faster you'll tear up. I see a lot of Myers players stalking from super far away, which yes, it will work, but it is less efficient. 99 your tier 3 so you can pop it when necessary or when you're closer to the survivor. This will ensure that you get at least one down while you're in tier 3. In tier 3, you have a much faster vault speed. This is one of the most underrated aspects of his kit. If you're at a window, fake going one way and then moonwalk to the window and vault it. The survivor will go the opposite direction, but then you will cut them off right as they're in front of the window. Hag. Keeping your web of traps up is a higher priority than chasing survivors. I spend only 10 to 20% of my hag matches legitimately chasing survivors. Put your traps in high traffic areas, but spread them out. Put one trap in the center of loops, on the top of bottom of stairs, or in front of certain objectives like your hex totem generators, or survivors on hook. Placing multiple traps near each other will generally be a waste of your time and a waste of traps, because the survivor will just trigger them all anyway. If you're hooking a survivor in the basement, put them on the left hook, then place a trap in this corner of the stairs. This will make it much more difficult for people with flashlights to get rid of your trap. Doctor. Use your shock therapy to prevent vital actions. You can use it to prevent an unhook, cleansing a totem, blessing a totem, and opening an exit gate. Essentially, any action where the survivor is holding M1 can be prevented by shocking. This one is really obscure, but if the survivor is ever camping a downed shack pallet and they're on the inside, shock them through the wall and immediately vault the window. This will prevent them from vaulting the pallet and will let you get a free hit. Use your static blast not only for information, but for slowdown as well. Each time you static blast a survivor, their madness tears up. So if you have your static blast available and you're near multiple people, use it to tear all of them up. Cannibal. Always bring your chainsaw up when coming to a pallet loop. This gives the survivors only three options. Throw the pallet, which then you'll break immediately. Greed the pallet and continue looping, which will likely catch up to them anyway if you know how to use your tokens properly, or run away, which you'll probably catch up anyway again if you know how to use your tokens properly. If a survivor jumps into a locker while you're chainsawing, hit the locker with your saw. This will put you into your tantrum, which can still down survivors, and then just make sure you're spamming your open locker button. This makes it significantly more difficult for the survivor to time the escape properly, because if they get out too early, they die to your saw, but if they don't get out right when your tantrum finishes, then you grab them out of the locker because you're spamming the button. You can use your chainsaw as a psychological burden for survivors. For example, 
example, you can click your chainsaw, which is called feathering. So it makes the chainsaw noise, which may make the survivor greed the pallet because they thought they could get another loop in, but then you just M1 them instead. Nightmare. Fake teleport as often as you can. You can do this by holding the teleport button on a generator and letting go before the bar fills up. This will scare survivors off gens, which gives you more slowdown. This can also pair really well with ruin slash surveillance because then you can basically check if there are people on that gen. Teleport to cut off survivors in chase or to make them think you're going to cut them off. If there's a gen near a chase, you can use your teleport to throw them off. Place your snares in narrow areas such as hallways or narrow paths like on Haddonfield. This will make it virtually impossible for the survivor to not get hit if they're running in that direction. Pig. You almost never want to use your stealth. You become super slow while crouched and it's usually not worth the time investment because the survivors could just see you anyway. When you're at a pallet loop, crouch and then charge your ambush facing in one direction. Start to go in that direction for a split second and then immediately go in the other direction. This will throw survivors off and will guarantee a hit 90% of the time. Just like Trapper, you can crouch at a loop to bait the survivor into leaving that loop because they think you're going to ambush. This will generally give you enough time to catch up to them before the next loop. Clown. Throw your purple bottles to block off certain areas, not just to hit the survivor. This can force the survivor into a dead zone or a worse area in general. Using your yellow bottles for mobility around the map is usually not worth it. It means you have to be reloading a lot more frequently once you actually find a survivor. Try to save your bottles for when you're in chase. Throwing your bottle on something high up will spread it out in a larger area. This is pretty difficult to master, but once you get the hang of it, it will help you block off bigger areas. Bonus tip. If you hold your bottle out, wait until it shimmers. Just like the Huntress, this means that you can throw your bottle farther. Spirit. Now that the survivors hear directional audio when you're phasing, fake phase in one direction and then quickly go in the other direction to throw them off. This is especially helpful at small pallet loops. If you're phasing to traverse the map, you generally only want to use about half your phase. This will ensure that you have your phase ready when you find a survivor. Even if a survivor has iron will, you can still hear their footsteps and see them moving grass or bushes while phasing. You can really hear their footsteps on maps like the two swamps because the mud has a very distinct and loud sound. Legion. Most good survivors won't throw pallets if you're in your frenzy because they know that you can just vault it and injure them anyway. So, if you could tell that the person you're chasing is a good survivor, don't respect the pallets while using your power, just run straight through them as though they aren't there. If there are a lot of injured survivors grouped up, still use your power. Grouped up survivors are what you feed off of because they will all have to mend which slows the game down significantly. Unlike survivors, you can fast vault windows no matter the angle, so you can come from the side and still fast vault it. You don't need momentum either. Plague. You can puke on any interactable object in the game. Game. This includes, but is not limited to, chests, windows, gens, doors, and totems. But don't quote me on the last two, because I barely play Plague. You can also puke on lockers to quickly check if anyone is in them. Flick your screen when puking to make it easier to hit a survivor. It causes your puke to be spread out in a wider area instead of a single point. The more you puke on a healthy survivor, the faster their sickness meter fills up. So the most ideal situation is to puke on a survivor until they become broken, and then hit them with your weapon. This is the fastest method of downing a survivor, because they don't receive a speed boost when losing a health health state to sickness. Ghostface. Your ability is also extremely good in chase. It can do a multitude of things for you. It can hide your red stain, which yes, can be done by moonwalking, but it will hide it while you're vaulting as well. It also eliminates your terror radius to prevent other survivors from finding you to get flashlight saves or to body block. Just like Myers, you can 99 survivors stock meters and then pop it when you're really close to them to ensure an insta down. But remember, if you're stalking while leaning, it goes up really fast, so be careful not to overdo it. Hitting a survivor will reset their stock meter, so if you have someone 99 it is sometimes better to chase someone else and save the 99th person for later if you don't have your power yet. Demogorgon. Using a fully charged shred can get you a lot of distance if used off of a high ledge. This can help you traverse the map more efficiently. The information and slowdown you can get from portals is extremely underrated. By holding your shred, you can see survivors' heartbeats if they're near your portals, which can give you very valuable information. You can also create a lot of slowdown if survivors focus on cleansing your portals instead of doing gens. If you're in a 3-gen situation, put two portals next to each other, but only use one of them. This will make it so that the survivors can only see that one, so they will expect that that's the only portal there. If they cleanse it, then they think they'll be safe, but then you come out of a hidden one with a little surprise attack. Oni. Just like Wraith, it is really good to do a hit and run style of gameplay because you get your power by survivors being injured. So if you ever see an injured survivor and a healthy survivor, you usually want to chase the healthy survivor to get your power faster. But that is very situational. Sometimes you'll want to down the injured person just for more pressure. While you're in your power, you are so fast that 
that it's really easy to bait going one direction, but then actually go in the other direction. This will make it fairly easy to down survivors if they fall for the bait. You don't have to use all your power. If you have no idea where anyone else is after you down a survivor, don't waste your power looking for other people. Just pick that survivor up and it will keep your power's progress bar filled to wherever it was, making it easier to refill your power for the future. Deathslinger. Pulling backwards after spearing a survivor brings them to you faster as well as makes it more difficult for them to wiggle. You usually want to hold backwards as you're pulling someone in unless you shoot them as they're vaulting a window, then you have to get really close to the window in order to hit them. You can shoot through pretty much any cracks in the walls. This includes but is not limited to the holes in shack, the dead dog saloon balcony fence, or the railings of stairs. Sometimes it is good to let survivors struggle out of your chain and stun you rather than canceling your chain if you know you can't reach them. This will still put them into the mending state which will not only injure them but it'll make it harder for them to see as well as making it so they have to spend additional time mending. Executioner. The most ideal way of using his cages is to hook them first then cage them. If they step in your trail of torment the only way they can become untormented is to rescue someone else from a cage. Your trails will disappear immediately if they're within a certain radius of important objectives such as survivors on the hooks or doors. So try to remember this so you don't waste your time making trails. To prevent camping, Behavior implemented a mechanic where if you're within a certain small radius of someone in a cage, they will teleport to a different cage location. You can utilize this to your advantage if you find someone in a cage and know that survivors are close to you. This will make it so that the survivors have to run all the way across the map again to get to the cage. Blight. You can look down to make it easier to slide off certain walls and objects. This can let you get some really cheeky hits that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise. I know I said I'm not going to talk about add-ons, but this is an exception. If you're using the Compound 21 add-on, which lets you see the auras of survivors when you slam against a wall, you get a blood point bonus on the top right every time someone's aura shows up. However, their aura won't show up if they're in a locker. So if you slam into a wall and you don't see anyone's aura, but you still got the compound 21 bonus blood points, that means someone is hiding in a locker within 8 meters of you. You can break pallets while in your power by swinging while rushing. This can help you break pallets more efficiently and it only uses two tokens, so you'll be able to get them back pretty quickly. Twins. You could place your body or victor in certain locations to block areas. You can body block doors, pallets, or windows with this trick. This makes chases significantly easier. Just like Huntress, if you have Victor charged and are really close to the survivor, wait until they go in front of you rather than tracking their movements. This will make it much less likely that you'll miss. I despise playing the twins, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you can look down to make your Victor jump shorter or look up to make your Victor jump higher. This can help you if you need to pounce over a pallet or a window to hit a survivor. Bonus tip, if you pounce on a survivor while they're at the exit gate, they are unable to leave for a short period of time, even if you then proceed to down them. Use this to your advantage for toxic teabagging survivors. Trickster. Sometimes it's better to just hit them with your weapon instead of trying to use your knives. It's just like the psychological hillbilly effect where you think you need to use your power to get any use out of the character. Your knife throwing speeds up as you continue to throw. So if a survivor is in a total dead zone, that is the best time to use your knives because it'll be difficult for them to dodge. If you're at a loop that you could throw your knives over, many survivors will just try to leave the loop if you pull up your knives. So similar to pig and trapper, you can bait the survivor to leave the loop by pulling up your knives and and then immediately putting them away. Nemesis. Don't be afraid to tentacle strike your zombies. They will respawn soon after and it'll help you tear up faster. If you're already maxed here, you can still kill them if they're in a bad position so they can hopefully respawn somewhere else. Just like the Huntress and the Twins, if you're holding your tentacle out near a survivor, wait for them to go in front of you rather than tracking their movements to make it easier to hit them. Use your zombies to your advantage. They're way better than you think. Their arms will go up if a survivor is nearby, which can give you vital information you wouldn't have had otherwise. You should also try to push your survivors towards your zombies in chase if they are nearby. Pinhead. You will always face the direction of the survivor if you teleport to them, so if they're behind a wall, just note that they will still be in front of you after you spawn. At the exit gate, you can use your chains to prevent survivors from exiting, similar to the twins. This only works if they are injured, however, because otherwise they will be able to escape before you can hit them twice. You don't have to just use your chain to hit people, you can also use it for information if necessary. You generally don't want to do this because it takes a while, but if you're on like RPD, for example, and want to see if it's worth going upstairs to a certain gen, check to see if someone is working on it with your chain before spending 20 minutes finding your way up. Artist. Your crows can go an unlimited distance on the map, so you can use them for cross-map information. Place them facing important objectives that are far away, such as hooks, gens, or totems to find survivors easily. If there is a survivor there that you hit, you'll be able to see the auras of the birds swarming them. You can use your crows as bait. If you have a crow head floating already, the survivor may think you're going to launch it when they run in front of it. Instead, use this to your advantage and don't launch it, but rather hit them with your weapon when they lose distance trying to dodge it. Put your crows in a shotgun formation like this to make it more difficult for the survivors to dodge. This is extremely good if the survivor is already affected by your crows because it almost guarantees that they will go down. If you guys made it through this entire video, go in the comments and leave 
a tomato emoji. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. I also stream on Twitch every Tuesday at 1 p.m. PST, so feel free to stop by and say hi. I do open lobbies a lot if you ever want to come play with me. Anyway, guys, I think that's all I have for you today, so I will see you all in the next one. Peace!